Hello and welcome to Processing Aids which will be covered in three parts wherein we are going to learn about polymer processing aids that is plasticizers and lubricants. Let us first introduce the topic. Processing aids are materials that are added to improve the processability and handling of high molecular weight compounds. Improved processability lowers the cost and improves the quality of the polymers. With the help of the processing aids, extrusion lines run faster. The molding cycles also shorten. You would also find for PVC, polyolefins, nylons and other engineering plastics, they are known to benefit the most from the effect or addition of the process aids. So the most used process aids include styrenics, acrylics, calcium carbonates, lubricants, silicon oils and so on. So you find that these are some of the materials and their subsequent chemistries are more important and more beneficial to be used as a polymer processing aid. So what is their role in polymer processing? It guards the polymer products while processing from damages such as melt fracture, dye buildup and polymer degradation which are irreversible and results in gels and dark spots in the finished product. It improves film transparency. So we just saw that there can be buildup of these kind of spots and if the polymer degrades and it is meant to be transparent, you might find that there would be light scattering and uh, that would generally result in uh, hindering of the transparency of the component. It improves the smoothness and surface aspects. It improves the product appearance. So it also improves the mechanical properties. So it also reduces the time. It helps in consistent production and consumes low energy along with helping in the reduction of cycle time and quicker transition and helps in reducing the tie pressure. What are the effect of process aids on specific polymers? The benefits are realized mainly in the melt stage of the host polymer. So processing aid acts as a fusion promoter and it also increases the melt elasticity in polyvinyl chloride profile extruded and calendared products. The processing aid lowers the surface friction of polyolefin films allowing the film to be rapidly extruded and then shipped or stored in rolls. They allow resin to be converted easily in blown film processes or in thermoforming processes. In biopolymers specifically if you are talking about polylactic acid you would find that uh, it's known to have poor melt strength characteristics and it further reduces upon processing because there is a breakdown of the polymer chains when you are going to expose it to heat. So there would be further deterioration in the melt strength due to a decrease in the molecular weight. So let us look at the first categorization of process aids that is plasticizers. Plasticizers are relatively non-volatile organic substances which are mainly in the liquid form. When incorporated into a plastic or an elastomer, they help improve the polymer's flexibility extensibility and processability. Plasticizers increase the flow and thermoplasticity of a polymer by decreasing the viscosity of the polymer melt. Along with that it also alters the glass transition temperature uh, slightly and uh, the melting temperature as well. So if you add more plasticizers you will find that the polymer will be processable at lower temperatures. It also improves the elastic modulus of the finished product without altering the fundamental chemical characteristics of the plastics material. It is well known for their effectiveness in producing flexible polymers like PVC that is uh, flexible PVC out of rigid PVC and acrylates as well which are also known for their flexibility. The compatibility is important as phase separation would result in migration to the surface which pretty much happens in all these uh, flexible cable kind of applications. Now what are the types of plasticizers? So we'll look at the categorization of plasticizers. So the, they are categorized into internal and external methodology of plasticization in which you would find that uh, internal works on the synthesis uh, side whereas external works on what we can do during the compounding stage. So internal is a limited technique and uh, you would find that every copolymer is suited to a certain flexibility needs with, above which it will not be able to go. Whereas external is something that is uh, the commonly used method for plasticization which is further classified into primary and secondary uh, plasticizers and uh, secondary are also termed as extenders. So when you add a plasticizer what happens or rather what are the stages when we add a plasticizer what happens to the polymer. So the incorporation of an external plasticizer that is the one that you are adding in the processing stage in PVC polymer enhances its flexibility. The addition of plasticizer chiefly involves five distinct steps. So plasticizer is first mixed with the resin. Plasticizer penetrates and swells the resin particles. 
the polar groups in the PVC chain are freed from each other. So these PVC polar groups are freed and then these freed polar groups are going to interact with the, the plasticizer polar groups. So there is going to be interaction of the polar groups on the PVC chain with the plasticizer polar groups which are there. And the PVC structure is again re-established upon cooling with full retention of the plasticizer. Now let us introduce lubricants first. So lubricants as additives for polymers assist the movement of one object passing over other object. So their primary role is to reduce friction, minimize wear and prevent the overheating of the parts. That is what we have seen just now. While wear and heat cannot be completely eliminated, reducing them to a negligible or an acceptable level is must to maintain the performance in your application. The selection and use of a right lubricant plays an important role here. So lubricants usually act by modifying the viscosity of the melt by introducing different surface energies at the interface between the phases. Simply sticking between the melt and the processing machinery that is screw barrels and dies can also be a significant break on the output or the throughput of the machine. However, the addition of multifunctional systems in which an apparently high priced lubricant can more than pay for itself by modifying other properties such as impact strength, low temperature performance, improved distribution of other additives and moisture and gas barrier properties. Now what are the desired properties of lubricants? So the first property as a part of the physical property that we are talking about is color. So color normally indicates the purity of lubricants, especially synthetic lubricants. Higher the APHA color, higher the presence of undesirable impurities in the lubricant. Example is textiles are very sensitive to colors of lubricants that may affect the whiteness. The second point is viscosity. Viscosity of the lubricant has a desirous physical property. So it is crucial for handling the frictional properties. However, the nature of the lubricant surface may be very well dictating the required viscosity. The soft polymer surfaces may rely more heavily on low viscosity lubricants. So if you have softer polymer surfaces, something like EVA and all, you would require lubricants which should be really low viscosity. And when we are talking about materials that are very, very hard, something like metals, they can easily use much higher viscosity lubricants. Next part is thermal stability as a desirous physical property of the lubricant. So it is important uh, function of a molecular weight. So the higher the molecular weight normally the greater the thermal stability of the lubricant. The thermal stability can be achieved at low viscosities via branching of the chemical structure. Let us look at the first type uh, and characteristics that is internal lubricants. So they act intermolecularly making it easier for polymer chains to slip past one another. They reduce the melt viscosity and provide better polymer flow. External lubricants act at the molten polymer surface between the polymer and the processing equipment. What are the characteristics of internal lubricants? They have good affinity towards the polymer. Next is reduce the viscosity of the polymer melt. It will reduce the heat generated by the action of frictional forces. It affects elastic behavior in the course of successive processing steps such as swelling and melt fracture of the bulk polymer. And in PVC, it reduces the time which is required for the plasticization of the polymer. Now, what are the requirements for a material to be working as an effective lubricant? An effective lubricant should be slightly soluble in the polymer. It should have cohesion with the polymer molecules in order to not exude too easily unless you want to actually purposely use it for exudation, something like an external lubricant. It should be a long chain hydrocarbon ended by a polar group. Melting point should be such that the film produced at the surface of the polymer particles is strong enough. So if the melting point uh, of this lubricant is too low, the film that will be formed will not be strong enough or if it is too high, the film will not be formed at all. Let us look at how PVC is lubricated. So there are two forms of lubricants that are incorporated. The first one is internal lubricants. So the internal lubricants used are highly polar and thus are highly compatible with PVC. On the other hand, external lubricants are mostly non-polar such as paraffin and polyethylene waxes. The lubrication effect is largely determined by the length of the hydrocarbon chain and its branching along with the functional groups that are present. At high dosages, they can lead to cloudiness and exudation. We'll now look at zinc stearate. It is one of the most widely used additives in plastics in the primary role of a lubricant. 
It also works as a densifying and a partitioning agent. It is used extensively for color concentrates as a dispersing aid. It improves the processing of styrenics, polyesters and polyolefins. So these are three materials with which zinc stearate is very popular. When compared to calcium stearate, so there can be zinc stearate and calcium stearate. Both work as a lubricant but when we compare both of them, the calcium stearate has a melting point of 150 degrees centigrade. It also has a lower tendency towards the formation of turbidity and is preferred for transparent applications. With a low melting point with respect to other metal stearates, it spreads very evenly when it is heated. Also, it is used as a release or a powdering agent. It also doubles up as an acid scavenger and process aid for polyolefins. The next is polypropylene waxes which are low molecular weight polyolefins based on metallocene catalysts. They are perfectly suitable as sole carriers for pigments and additive master batches. It allows higher loadings with extremely low FPV that is filter pressure values without negative impact on physical and mechanical properties. Next is polyethylene waxes which are based on Ziegler polymerization including the catalyst and solvent removal. It is of high purity and provide good thermal stability along with providing clear melt properties. It serves as an external lubricant in PVC due to incompatibility and PVC is of course polar in nature. It works as an internal lubricant in polyolefinic compounds and master batch formulations. For example, a commercial product which is Lecovax PE250 is a branch polyethylene wax of medium molecular weight. The last category is that of amide waxes which are brittle and hard waxes made from ethylene bisteramide. They are rich in hydroxyl and amide groups which can form strong hydrogen bond chemical forces and form a strong network thereby increasing the viscosity of the system to achieve an anti-settling and anti-sagging feature. So it has good rheology control and that is why you will find th there will be anti-settling and migrational characteristics which are really good especially for something like paint purposes. It works as an internal and external lubricant which is very common in polyolefin and PVC for food contact products. It is popular for use in the printing inks and the coatings industry. It also allows high temperature processability. A commercial example that is Lecovax C is an amide wax of N and dash bis sterileethylene diamine is used for polyolefins, polyethylene terephthalate and PVC as a slip and an anti-blocking agent.